There are many aspects of application performance, but broadly we can categorize them into two groups, front-end performance and back-end performance. And from a testing perspective, testing these two types of performance can be quite different. Front-end performance testing verifies user experience at the interface level, meaning everything that a user sees of your web app on their laptop or other device that they're using to access it. When we're doing front-end performance testing for web apps like Crocs are cool, this might involve automating user interactions with the site through the browser. So things like clicking on a button or filling out a form or having scripts that load on the browser and run. Sometimes the metrics we look at for front-end performance tests are also quite different. We often look at the time it takes for a user to click on a button till the time that the next page is rendered, maybe a particular element of that page. Doesn't sound any different from server response time, but actually that total round trip takes into account things like latency or the time that it takes for a client side script to run and display the information that the person is looking for. Some of the advantages of performance testing are that one, it is more realistic because it measures from where the end user is. End users don't particularly care what's going on under the hood. They care about the overall experience and that's exactly what front end performance testing measures. Second, a majority of the performance issues that are reported by end users are actually issues in the front end. So skipping this type of testing doesn't make a lot of sense because that's a lot of things that you could do to improve on the overall experience. But there are also some disadvantages. First, front-end performance testing doesn't look under the hood, so it can't really tell you if a particular component is displaying issues. That's because that's not something that is visible on the browser, and that's what front-end performance looks at. Second, it can be quite expensive to run because the resources required to actually spin up a browser instance and interact with your application the way that a real user would costs in terms of resources. And so those tests are also more resource intensive than say protocol based tests. Third, testing front end performance only can sometimes lead to pretty misleading results. That's because the front end component of the entire response time of an application is pretty much constant as load increases, but it's not so for the back end component. So only testing the front end can mean that you get a lot of false positives. On the other hand, backend performance testing targets the things under the hood, the underlying servers and infrastructure that end users don't see. For Crocs are cool, this could be a database that contains customer information or a payment gateway or an authentication service for customers that have already signed up. These are things that an end user doesn't see and maybe isn't ever even aware of, but they still have an effect on response times. Scripting against the back end is quite different from scripting against the front end because instead of scripting user interactions like clicking, you're scripting certain requests that are being sent on the protocol level. So for example, you could have an HTTP GET request for the page and also for its embedded resources. Backend performance includes things beyond just load times and latency. It includes things like scalability or availability and reliability. And so the metrics that we measure during backend performance testing are different as well. We might look at server uptime or response times per component. We could also trace the path of a particular request through the application stack. The advantages of backend performance testing are first, that the 20% of performance bottlenecks that aren't uncovered by front end performance can unfortunately be the most complicated to troubleshoot, identify, and to fix. And even worse, a lot of backend performance issues can spiral out of control at higher levels of load. So it's not like front end performance issues where they are pretty much constant at different levels of load. Backend issues can be quite expensive to fix later on in a development cycle as well. Secondly, you can target different components of an application. You can choose which API endpoints to hit and how hard, and you can target specific user flows. So it doesn't always have to be end-to-end -end testing. 
And third, backend performance tests tend to be less resource intensive in general because they're just protocol level requests that can easily be ramped up. You don't need to spin up a browser instance or even parse through the DOM of a web page or look for specific elements. It's just a matter of sending these requests and that's something that you can increase the scale of pretty cheaply. Backend performance testing still has its disadvantages too though. First, it doesn't know anything about what's happening on the front end, and a lot of sites these days actually use scripts that have to run on the front end. So with backend performance testing, these tools that you use just download those scripts, and the response time that they measure is the download time, which is not really realistic because those scripts are executed. That's something that front end performance measures. And secondly, backend performance testing is more expansive in scope than frontend performance testing, especially with microservices based applications. There's so many components and it can be difficult to determine where to look and you can quickly get into a rabbit hole of constant never ending performance tuning. So I've talked about front-end and back-end performance testing, and they both seem to have advantages and disadvantages of their own. So which one should you do? The answer is both, if at all possible. They really look at different parts of application performance. And if you are interested in getting a holistic view of user experience, then really both types of testing are essential. If you're testing at the larger scale with lots of users and you want to test both the front end and back end aspects of performance, then I do suggest that you change your test strategy so that you generate majority of the load with back end performance testing scripts. That's due to the resource intensiveness of front end performance testing scripts that we discussed earlier. So if you generate most of the load with a back end and then you have a handful of front end performance testing scripts running in the background as well, then you still get a good idea of both. Remember that front-end application performance remains pretty much constant throughout different levels of load, but you'll still get a lot of useful insights on both types of performance without worrying too much about the scaling costs. Front-end and back-end performance both affect what your end users are going to ultimately think of your application. If the underlying application servers respond immediately to all requests, but then a huge picture of a crocodile makes your homepage excruciatingly slow to load, then users aren't going to like that. On the other hand, if your homepage is really sleek and quick to load, but the application server hasn't yet responded with the data that the browser needs to render, then users aren't going to like that either. Learning how to test both aspects is going to give you the clearest view of how your application really performs.